pattern now of, of mass shootings in this country that uh, has no parallel anywhere else in the world. And, you know, for those who are concerned about terrorism, uh, you know, some may be aware of the fact that we have uh, a no-fly list where people can't get on planes, but those same people who we don't allow to fly could got, go into a store right now in the United States and buy a firearm, and there's nothing that we can do to stop them. Uh, that's a law that needs to be changed. All right, I think we've pretty much dealt with the no-fly list and uh, established why that is a red herring. Joining us now is John Lott. He is the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. Hello, John. Great to talk to you again, Steve. Well, great to talk to you. And uh, we turn to you because uh, you've written such great uh, stuff in, in the wake of this horrific uh, terrorist attack in San Bernardino in Paris. And uh, basically, you just disprove every word that comes out of Barack Obama's mouth. Let's start with the fact that, uh, that there, there, are, aren't, there aren't shootings uh, like this uh, in other countries. I mean, it's just a ridiculous statement. And for him to make that claim, as he has many times, but most recently while he's in Paris, is just bizarre. I mean, uh, on November 13th, uh, less than a month ago, you just had 129 people killed and over 360 people injured uh, from the attack that they had at that time. But, you know, uh, Europe has had a few of the worst mass public shootings, not just that, but you also have like the Norway attack in 2011. Uh, you had 67 people killed, 110 wounded just by firearms, not even including the bomb uh, casualties that you had. If you look at school shootings, K through 12 school shootings, three of the four worst have all been in, in Europe. Uh, two of those have been in Germany since 2001. So, you know, if you just look at overall numbers, uh, again, just comparing the United States to Europe, the United States ranks ninth in terms of the rate that these attacks occur and eighth in terms of fatalities from these attacks. And, of course, places like Africa and some parts of uh, Southeast Asia have have these attacks at even much higher rates than we have here in the United States. Absolutely. And, and you know, you wrote a great piece at National Review, which everybody should read. It's uh, titled, Passing More Laws Doesn't Keep uh, Terrorists from Getting Guns. And, and, and that, you know, that, that's, the, that's the nonsensical nature of this whole argument. You know, whether it's just the gun control on, a, on a, a, a lower level or in the wake of terrorist attacks, the bad guys will get the guns. Right. Well, look, you know, at some point, even the media is starting to get this. And that is, we just had this uh, shooting in California. Well, the president, after each of these mass public shootings during his administration, has pushed for these expanded background checks, these background checks on private transfers of guns. We already have it if you go through a dealer and buy it. Well, the thing is, California already has this law. Colorado, which just had a shooting a week earlier, had already has the law too. Oregon, which just had a shooting in October, has the same law. And uh, indeed, if you look at all the mass public shootings during the entire Obama administration, uh, there's not one case that he can point to that would have been stopped as a result of having uh, the types of laws that he's advocated, whether it be these different types of background checks or whether it be the assault weapons ban that or whatever regulations he's vaguely was referring to a couple times over the weekend. And my own belief is that the reason why these push this is not that they think that it's really going to matter, because as I say, they can't even point to one case where these laws would have stopped one right. of these attacks. But the reason why I think they do it is it just will make it costly for law-abiding citizens to get guns. So in New York, where you're at, the expanded background check adds about $80 under the cost of transferring a gun. Uh, same in, Col in California. In Colorado, it adds about $60. In Washington, D.C., it adds about $200 to the cost of transferring a gun. That may not stop you or I from being able to purchase a gun, but the types of people that my research indicates need protection the most, poor blacks who live in high-crime urban areas, might very well be priced out of being able to have a gun for protection. Right. And so, okay. you know, it's not like if I'm a gang member in Washington, D.C., 
they're going to go to a dealer to go and make sure they have a background. <laughs> well, that's a whole other thing, John. I mean, we only have 30 seconds, but the black sure. market on guns, that's right. never addressed. Right. But, no, exactly. Look, people know how easy it is to go and buy illegal drugs. Well, who do they think also sells illegal guns? Drug right. gangs do. Right. right. They, we, had a, we had a caller to our America's Talking Live uh, show on Friday who said, ask your guests about the black market. I've never heard that address, and I've never heard it addressed, so I brought it up to you. Hey, John, continue the great work. Great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the job you do. Thank you. CrimeResearch.org. Okay, CrimeResearch.org. John Lott, folks. Up next, Stephen Moore. Don't go away.